Welcome to Reading and Writing Between the Lines, a podcast series about communication skills in the workplace. I'm your host, John Witzman. Join me as I speak with industry professionals and Conestoga faculty and alumni to explore their journeys with reading and writing skills. Follow us as we talk about how communications learning has changed over the years, how these skills are used in a wide range of industries, and the future of workplace communications. It's amazing as as I listen to you describe um, crafting a vision, uh, how 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 much it sounds to me like the work that we do in our communications area, sort of just below the surface. Uh, and again, uh, how much it feels like uh, what we aspire critical thinking to mean to our students in their different fields. So again, hearing you. Um, Apply this kind of inner voice to your own work, asking yourself, where, wh- what is the situation, right? One of the fundamental uh, concepts in our communications courses uh, is, is the concept of a rhetorical situation. Who's my audience and what's my purpose? Mm-hmm. And making communications choices from that original framework. Uh, I could use this set of vocabulary or that. I could use this, uh, you know, structure in how I organize my writing or present my writing or another one. I have a million different sliders that I could toggle up or down and, and, and neither side is right or wrong, but appropriate or, or less appropriate for this given situation. Yeah. And, and the, the, the sort of beginning stage is to have the ability to sort of operate at either side of that toggle switch. Um, but then the next stage is to have the wherewithal to understand what's called for in the situation and why, mm-hmm. and to assess, okay, have I, have I done that? Right. And then also, as you said, starting to do that editing work as well. Okay. So here's my first sense of how I craft this menu, how I shape this experience for this restaurant. But now also let me step back and see, is it working? Um, you know, where have, have I missed the mark a little bit? And, and, and that doesn't sound all that different um, to my ear than uh, the kind of editing and revision that we might do with, a, with an essay or with a, uh, you know, an, an argumentative paragraph or anything that might be written on the page. Yeah, agreed. I think it's got to be able to work together. It's got to be able to flow. If you're reading an essay and then you, know, you start feeling like the writer of that essay is rambling or they've kind of like, you know, started like talking in circles, you can feel that. And as you're editing yourself through, you say, okay, I'm kind of going, this is getting redundant here. Let's get this a bit succinct. And I don't think uh, menus are any different. I think, um, you know, like if you were to be someone who's a, a meat eater and you don't ever eat, you know, like lots of vegetables and stuff, that's fine for you personally. But if you're the chef of a restaurant, you're not catering to yourself. You know, you gotta, I talk a lot about, I've, I've known chefs that can get frustrated with like vegan diners or something, right. which I think is hilarious because if you're a business owner, um, you're turning away a huge chunk of business and, and more and more in the, as time goes on, do we have to uh, be responsible for catering to the guests with whether they're dietary restrictions by choice, by um, allergies, by religion, um, you are catering to the guests and they call it hospitality for a reason. Right. Um, if you think it's, oh, this is what we do, you know, that that is actually poor communication that you're you're sending out to your guests is that, you know, my tastes are more important or, you know what I mean? I, yeah, I, so absolutely. like one thing, I this will sound funny, but I, one one thing I've heard chefs say for years and years is they say you eat with your eyes. Right. And when the food looks really, really nice right away, you're going to think, wow, this looks great. If someone puts something down in front of you and it looks really sloppy, your first impressions are, this isn't going to taste very good. Right. But one thing I've started to say, and it sounds funny, like I'll say again, is I say like you eat with your ears as well. So when you're reading a menu, if it sounds good and it's enticing, you're actually, you're trying to communicate like that to the guests. So you could have something that's delicious, but if it's not really communicated well, someone might get a dish in a restaurant and say, oh, you know, like it's not what I expected. Right. And that's a communication piece that the chef has missed the mark on how to describe what they're, um, you know, offering on their menu. And people don't like surprises in a restaurant like that. You know, they want to know, feel confident of what they're getting. So it's a it's a funny piece there. And I try and and put that into the perspective of young chefs as well, not to overwhelm, but to kind of keep things um, in perspective. 
it's fascinating to think of uh, a menu in the terms that you're describing here, almost as a kind of uh, inst- instructional document, right? That it's it's a kind of uh, a roadmap to to the to the diner, um, describing the experience they're about to have. It sounds like uh, maybe I've underestimated menus in the past. That it's not just um, uh, a shopping list or a, a list of options, but um, almost little doorways into into the next you know hour hour and a half of my life that and and that it shapes that experience as well that it's setting up expectations um, it's it's creating um, sort of uh, hopes or images in my head it sounds like it's actually a really powerful document and and uh, doing one writing one effectively requires a great deal of of, of skill and intentionality. And that marks the end of another episode of Reading and Writing Between the Lines, a podcast hosted by me, John Witzman, on behalf of the Communications Department and School of Interdisciplinary Studies at Conestoga College. You can find other episodes of this series on our YouTube channel, Reading and Writing Between the Lines. Stay tuned for more episodes. Thanks for listening.